First, what do we know about classic high inflation? I mean really high inflation, like the kind you saw in Germany in the 1920s, or in Zimbabwe uh, just a few uh, years ago. What do we know about hyperinflation? We know hyperinflation comes with basically two ingredients. One is there are large budget deficits. The government is spending a lot more than it's taking in in tax revenue. And second, there's very rapid money growth. That is, the fiscal authority spends more money than it's taking in in taxes. And instead of borrowing in bond markets, perhaps because its credit rating is not very high, it turns around to the central bank and says, will you please finance our spending by printing some money for us? The central bank obliges, hands the money over to the government, the newly created money over to the government, the government spends it, the money supply increases, and it keeps doing that. If you do that enough, inflation gets uh, out of control. Indeed, that's what happens in the classic hyperinflations. Uh, in my lecture on that at, at Harvard, I had a series of slides showing what a typical currency in uh, Zimbabwe looks like, starting off with sort of a 20 Zimbabwe dollar note, until finally you get up with like a one trillion Zimbabwe note. And what you realize is that people, people, people are carrying around the trillion dollar notes, and they, people start wondering, maybe we should do something about this. And eventually they did. They uh, stopped the hyperinflation by abandoning the Zimbabwe dollar and using the US dollar, <laughs> which they didn't have the ability to print. Um, okay, so that's the classic story of hyperinflation. That story gets people nervous right now. Why? Well, we observe very large budget deficits right now. Uh, in, indeed, if you look at the President Obama's recent budget just re released a few weeks ago, there, there's no end in sight for the budget deficits. And indeed, the government debt to GDP ratio continues to rise over the 10-year budget window. And we're also seeing rapid growth in the money supply. If you look at the monetary base, which is the measure that's the sum of currencies in your wallet, plus reserves the banks are holding the bank system, as we speak, the money the banks have in their wallets, so to speak. If you look at that measure of the money supply monetary base, it is growing at a very, very rapid clip. And so some people are tempted to say, gosh, these are the two ingredients for classic hyperinflations, so it's only a matter of time before we, the US goes down that route, uh, and as a result, they're buying gold. Well, I'm not all that worried myself, because while it's true we have the two classic ingredients for hyperinflation, they're not going hand in hand in the way they are in the, in the classic scenario. In the classic scenario, we have rapid money growth because the central bank is financing a budget deficit. Here we have rapid money growth, not because Ben Bernanke wants to finance ben, uh, President Barack Obama's uh, budget deficit, but rather Ben Bernanke is looking at a moribund economy, trying to stimulate a moribund economy uh, in the presence of a very dysfunctional credit system and is increasing the money supply in the process. So this idea that the fiscal imbalance is driving money growth, which in turn will lead to inflation, is not the story going on right now, even though it might superficially look that way.